I do what I do because I've seen God's power transform my own life, and He will do it for you. The key to everything is found in God's Word. I'm Joyce Meyer, and I believe that God can heal you everywhere you hurt. We're doing a little series this weekend on the devil. I know you're all happy about hearing about the devil. And uh, some people don't believe the devil's real, but I'm sorry to tell you that he is. And uh, if you don't believe that, all you got to do is look around at the world and see the condition it's in. And it certainly isn't God that's the creator of all the evil that's in the world. And that's the best way I know how to put it, that the world today is full of evil and evil people. And we blame the government and we blame everything, but behind it all is the devil. That doesn't mean that people aren't responsible for what they do, but the devil will work through and use anybody that he can, including Christians. I don't believe he can possess a Christian because they're full of the Holy Spirit, but he certainly can oppress them. How many of you believe the devil's ever used your mouth to yeah, I have to definitely say that there's been times when he's used mine to hurt people and to say things that were just really downright stupid. And so he'll use your attitude, your mouth, certainly try to put all kinds of wrong thoughts in your life because I always like to say where your thoughts go, where the thoughts go, the man goes. It's just like you think about a hot fudge sundae long enough, you'll probably go get one no matter what time it is, no matter how far you have to go. It's amazing how our thoughts affect our feelings and our emotions. And so it's very important that we realize the devil is a real entity. E.M. Bounds said in his book, the devil is a person not a person like we are with the human body, but a person with a personality, a personality that's very evil. And the devil really is to be respected. Don't ever make fun of the devil or think that he's just a big joke because he has a lot of power. But one thing he does not have any longer because Jesus took it away from him is authority. We have authority and power. Luke 10, 19 says, behold, I have given you, not I will give you, but I have given you power and authority to tread on serpents. That's the way he appeared to Eve in the garden as a serpent, to tread on serpents and scorpions I've given you power over all the power of the devil and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So you have power and you have authority, but it's up to you to use it. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. We're going to talk about being a little more aggressive, not being so dull headed and just bleh, wait, let the devil walk all over us and do nothing about it. But 1 Peter 5, 8 says, resist the devil at his onset. You don't wait until you've been a broken down mess for three months and then finally it takes a truckload of Christians to come pick you up. You resist the devil at his onset and don't feel sorry for yourself when you have trouble. That's one of the best ways to invite the enemy in. In 1 Peter 5, 8 through 10, it says that the same afflictions are accomplished throughout the body of Christ all around the world. So whatever kind of problem you're having, there's somebody that's got a worse problem than you. Amen? And so um, the first scripture you're gonna read is Revelation 16, 15 out of the Amplified Classic Bible. And it basically says, stay awake and keep your clothes on. Which is an interesting scripture. If you don't understand it spiritually, you're gonna go, huh? He says, behold, I am going to come like a thief. Blessed, happy to be envied is he who stays awake 
alert and who guards his clothes so that he may not be naked and have the shame of being seen exposed. Now, isn't that an interesting scripture? What, you know, that doesn't mean to go sit in your closet with a shotgun <laughs> and guard your clothes all night. He's not talking about these kind of clothes. He's talking about spiritual clothing. Maybe that's a new thought for you. Maybe you haven't really comprehended that you have spiritual clothing, but all throughout the Bible, it tells us to put on some things and put off other things. And both of those terms, put on and put off, are action words. They require you to do something. I've never yet gone in my closet and had my clothes jump on my body. <laughs> I've had to pick them out and put them on. And many times, I don't like what I put on. I don't look good in it or... So I'll take it off and I'll put on something else. And trust me when I say that there are many Christians going out in the world today dressed spiritually in things that don't look good on them. Bad attitudes, self-pity, anger, bitterness, resentment, jealousy. Oh, but we go to church. Praise God, as long as you go to church and you got a cross hanging around your neck and a big Bible, then everything's okay. Well, I hate to disappoint you, but that's not what God's looking for. God sees the heart, and he sees what we do. And the Bible tells us over and over that Jesus is coming soon, and I don't know how soon is, but every day that goes by, it gets sooner. Paul thought he was coming back in his day, and we believe he's coming back in our day, and I think every generation believes he's coming back in their day, but one of these days it's gonna happen. And there are signs of the end times, and more and more of them are being fulfilled all the time. All you gotta do is read Matthew 24, and you'll find a lot of the things that the Bible says is going to happen in the last days, but God is watching, and he is a rewarder of those who are diligent. And diligence means that you don't just do the right thing one time, but you do it over and over and over and over and over. You do it when you feel like it. You especially do it when you don't feel like it. I'm gonna make a statement, and I want you to hear this. When you do the right thing, when you feel like doing the wrong thing, that's one of the most powerful things you can do. I must say it again. When you choose to do the right thing, when you feel like doing the wrong thing, it's one of the most powerful things that you can do. God may want you to be the aggressor and go and make peace with somebody who has hurt you and really everything in you says they should be the one coming to you. But you know in your heart that God wants you to be the aggressor and go make peace. The Bible says when you bring your gift to the altar, if your brother has ought against you, you go to him and make peace, then come back and bring your gift to the altar. Well, that's not an easy thing to do. But if we will just do what God tells us to do, it's amazing how good things will work out in our life. I don't know why we are so stinking stubborn, but it sure takes us a long time to realize that God was right after all, right? Oh, and by the way, he won't change his mind and do it your way. No matter how long you wait to do it his way, he's not gonna change his mind and do it your way. So the Bible says, for example, put on Jesus Christ. Put on love. Clothe yourselves with mercy, kind feelings, and a lowly opinion of yourself. Put on humility. Put off the old man, put on the new man, and put on the full armor of God. And I'll tell you in a minute what that is. But 
Well, you say, well, how do I do that? Well, the way it works for me is I, I think about it. I spend time with God every morning before I do anything else, and I highly recommend it. Now, you might say, well, I'm just not a morning person. Well, if you can only give it two minutes, some way, somehow, start your, say, your day with God if all you can say is, good morning, Lord. I love you. Yeah. Some people do better at night. At night, I'm done. I can't do anything but lay down somewhere. So mornings, I'm, I'm sharper in the morning, so it's better for me. Dave and I both do that. I'm glad that I have a husband that spends time seeking God every day. It's, uh, it's a wonderful thing. And you might say, well, I wish I had that. Well, you know, don't be jealous. Just do what you should do and let God take care of the rest. But no matter how many times a week you go to church, if you don't ever spend any personal time with God, that's the place where everything that you hear kind of comes together and starts to make sense for you. And if you told me I have time to either watch your TV program in the morning or spend 30 minutes with God, I'd tell you to spend time with God. As much as I want you to watch the program, it's just very important to put God first in your life. And one of the ways you do that is by putting him first in your time. And so when I spend that time with God, I think about things like this. I think about walking in love that day and who I'm going to be around and how I might show them love. This is the way you put these things on. You make a plan. <laughs> You plan ahead of time. If somebody hurts my feelings, I'm going to forgive them. If, uh, if somebody does something that they shouldn't do, I'm going to be merciful. You see, we don't just have to wait and see what happens. We can plan. Does anybody understand me? You, you just take 10 or 15 minutes in the morning and you think about these things. I put on Christ, which means you put on his nature, you put on his behavior. Jesus, I want to be like you. I want to represent you. We are his representatives in the earth. And for many people, you are the only Jesus they're going to see. And so that cross you wear around your neck, all that does is tell them to watch your behavior. <laughs> Go ahead, stick a bumper sticker on your car and then speed. <laughs> and make dirty signs at them when you, they do something you don't like and then expect them to believe that your Christianity has any value. You see, that's the problem today. You know, we yell, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, and then we don't act like it and so the world doesn't respect us. And you can't blame them. And really, by and large, the church today doesn't have the respect that it should have. And it's because we don't act the way that we should. You got to think about, God, I don't, I don't want to be haughty and proud today. I, you know, the first thing that happens when you think too highly of yourself is you start thinking too lowly of other people. If you think too much of yourself, you'll think too little of others. There's nothing that aggravates me worse than to see a spiritual leader mistreat people underneath him. We always make sure when we're out in these venues that we're good to the people in the back that work in these arenas. We're friendly with them good to them. Many times we give them books or the guys will take them something to eat. And over and over and over and over again we hear there's nobody that comes here that treats people any better than you do. Well, that's the kind of report we should be having about our behavior. Your friends should say things like nobody makes me feel any better than you do. You know, when you're with somebody, they may not remember everything you said, but I'll tell you what, they will remember how you made them feel. 
And if you make people feel valuable, that's what they need. Because the devil is really busy trying to make people feel worthless. We said last night, we know the devil's real, at least I know he's real. And uh, we already know he's going to lose. He's fighting the battle that Jesus has already won. We're just walking it out. And the Bible says that you got to believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so you see, I personally believe that you taking the time to be here, many of you last night, you'll be here all day today, some way, somehow in your life, there'll be a reward for that. God will make this time up to you and there will be something that you'll handle better in this next week than you would have if you wouldn't have been here and it'll save you some trouble that you would have had. Amen? And... You know, last night I talked about some things that were hard to talk about, but I know that I obeyed God. So therefore, some, no matter what kind of hoopla I might get from it, I know I obeyed God. And so therefore, somewhere along the way, there'll be a reward for that. God always rewards obedience. And many times the harder that obedience is, the greater the reward. Now, some of the rewards that we're going to receive will come when we get to heaven. Some of them will come here. But I personally am really looking forward to heaven. I mean, the Bible tells us some things about it. It doesn't tell us a lot. I wish it told us more, but it sure is apparently a pretty place. And uh, Jesus said something about mansions, and I like that. I like <laughs> I hope I get a big one that I can help decorate. And uh, I like that idea of, you know, jewels everywhere. I like sparkly stuff and pretty stuff. And uh, hope I get to do a seminar with Moses and Paul and Peter. You know, get to preach to somebody with a few famous people. But um, we should spend now preparing for there. Amen? Amen? Listen, even if you live to be a hundred, that's like a grain of sand on all the beaches in the world compared to eternity. You got to think about this. If you're here today and you've not surrendered your life to Christ yet, or if you're watching by television and you haven't surrendered your life to Christ, you're still trying to live your own life your own way, why don't you let today be the wisest day of your life do the smartest thing you can ever do. Repent from your sins, turn away from a life of sin and tell God I'm yours, you do with me what you want to. Let me tell you, people who think there's no God are gonna be very surprised in the end. And I always say, if I spend my whole life believing all this and I turned out to be wrong, I still haven't lost anything. I've been happy while I've been here. but. If you, on the other hand, spend your life not believing and you're wrong, <laughs> you're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Amen? Because then there's no time to fix it. So just remember that, you know, maybe in order to obey God, you got to lose a few friends. You know, if you're going to be a God pleaser, then you can't be a man pleaser. And sometimes when you don't please people, then they don't want anything to do with you. So let's just say you lost a few friends. Well, you know, that's much better than losing your soul. Amen? As so I'm really encouraging you, we're living in dangerous times, and I feel a real urgency in my spirit to encourage people to make a deeper commitment than ever and... Start really being obedient to God. You know, don't, don't compromise and think that, well, it's just a little bit and everybody else does it. You know, one time I was murmuring to God because I felt like there were other preachers that I knew that 
seemed to do things that God wouldn't let me do. And I was like, well, why is it that, you know, you tell me I can't do this, you know, I can't do that, you know, I can't see this movie and they go and I can't do this and I can't do that. And he, he just simply said, look, you've asked me for a lot. Do you want it or not? And I decided I did. So I've had to make a few sacrifices along the way. In Ephesians 6, it talks about putting on the full armor of God. It's armor that God supplies, but it's up to us to put it on. And uh, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 are certainly worth your study. It says to put on righteousness. Now, what does that mean? It means to know who you are in Christ. In Christ. Know who you are in Christ and understand that your who is different than your do. I don't do everything right, but I am still right with God because I believe in Jesus. The Bible says that in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. He that knew no sin became sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, that ought to make you feel good to be right with God because the devil is always trying to tell you what's wrong with you. How many of you know you wake up in the morning and if you're listening to him, the first thing he wants to remind you of is everything he did wrong the day before? Amen. And when you're, he loves those times when you're not fully awake. <laughs> so he can try to get a jump on your brain before you get a, a chance. And you got to learn how to fight back and say no. Like I said last night, I got up one morning last week and I could tell I had a little case of the grouchies. I was about to, I was just on the border of feeling sorry for myself. But you know what? I've been there and done that. And it doesn't do any good. And uh, I just said no. If I remember, I said it out loud. Nope, I'm not going there. And I started thanking God for everything that I could think of that I was blessed with. You got to fight. You got to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Got to stir yourself up. Get a little more aggressive. That's why you need to go to things like this where you... You're, you get stirred up, you know? You're gonna have a better week next week than you would have if you wouldn't have been here, but then you'll need to go get fed another time somewhere else. Righteousness, you gotta wear it. It's a breastplate, protects your heart, knowing who you are in Christ. Then it says, tighten the belt of truth. I like that. The, the truth is the word of God, so when you're, when you're in battle, when you're being attacked, it says tighten that belt of truth. In other words, hang on to it more than ever before. When, you're, when the word doesn't seem to be working for you, that's when the enemy's gonna try to tell you it's not true. But that's where you need to be smarter than him and say it is true, it is true, it is true. I believe it, I believe it. Have you been looking for a 365-day devotional? Well, look no further than the promises for your everyday life devotional from Joyce Meyer. There's a focus verse for all 365 days of the year, along with a prayer starter. Get your copy of Promises for Your Everyday Life devotional at joycemeyer.org slash 365devo. The biggest thing that we need to do is learn how to think like God thinks, and the only way you can do that is by knowing the Word of God. In Words to Live By, Joyce Meyer shares how studying the Word of God transformed her life. Experience a deeper and more meaningful relationship with God through the captivating collection of verses in this beautiful hardcover book by Joyce Meyer. Discover the transformative power of His Word. Words to Live By from Joyce Meyer. Get your YouTube exclusive offer today. Go to joycemeyer.org slash words and the number two. Have you ever been trapped in a never-ending frenzy where every passing moment feels like a blur, leaving you gasping for a chance to pause and catch your breath? In her insightful book, Pursuing Peace, Joyce Meyer explores the importance of seeking peace at all costs. This beautiful hardcover edition is filled with meaningful scriptures and uplifting quotes from Joyce, providing valuable guidance for living a peaceful lifestyle. So grab a cup of coffee, find a comfortable spot, and embark on your journey to find peace. Remember, this limited time YouTube offer won't last long. Go to joycemeyer.org pursuit to get your copy today and start your pursuit of peace.
The mind actually is the battlefield. That's where we win or lose the war with Satan. He said all he gets to say. <laughs> You start asking God to heal you and he will restore. He's the God of all comfort and I am so grateful that I know how to call on God.